Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, your look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Happy New Year. We expect 2016 to be another championship year in Kansas City. So here's a top 10 list of things to look forward to this year. Number 10, our new Chief Innovation Officer, Bob Bennett, starts this week. Number 9, the Chiefs are in the playoffs. Number eight, a study by Economic Development Quarterly takes a look at the creative economy and what it contributes to each city. Check out our city's Twitter account for a close look at that. Number seven, it's time to renew your community center all access pass through Kansas City Parks and Rec. Number six, in September, the city will host the ICMA conference, bringing 4,000 government professionals to see how we do things right here in Kansas City. Number five, January 24th is Change a Pet's Life Day. Be sure to thank an animal control officer for all the animals they have rescued and be sure to adopt a pet from the city's no-kill animal shelter. Number four, the Royals play an entire season as the defending world champions and sales of our city's baseball banners will help our city's fountains. Number three, in February, Water Services kicks off its annual capital improvement program, providing construction jobs while improving water quality as part of the city's largest infrastructure project. Number two, the Smart City Initiative will create new ways to improve city infrastructure in the 22nd century while we invite the world to be innovative in Kansas City's new high-tech playground. Plus, you'll also see some very cool interactive kiosks scattered around downtown. And the number one thing we'll be rolling out in Kansas City, Missouri this year. The Kansas City Streetcar. Four vehicles running on two miles of track connecting the River Market to Union Station. It will be free to ride and it's already sparking economic development across the entire downtown area. Look for the soft launch and then a major grand opening celebration coming up this spring. Now here's a video about how to drive or not to drive in traffic with the streetcar and news from our other city departments. The KC Streetcar moves with normal traffic. So when you're driving, be patient, share the road, be nice, park inside the white line, and mind your doors. Your car will thank you. Be smart, be safe, be ready. Ride KC. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities here to give you a glimpse of some of the upcoming events taking place for your family at City Facilities during this winter season. Mark your calendar for the annual 2016 Mid-America RV Show coming to Bartle Hall January 14th through the 17th. The Mid-America RV Show is the largest consumer show dedicated to the RVing lifestyle and everything associated with it. RVing enthusiasts can check out the newest products and services on the market. Whether you are on the market for a motorhome, custom motor coach, or pop-up camper, you will find it at the Mid-America RV Show. For additional information, go to gsevents.com. Your outdoor adventure continues with four days of boating and outdoor fun at the Kansas City Boat and Sports Show from January 21st through January 24th. Whether you're an avid outdoorsman or just looking for a way to escape winter for the day, this is your show. This annual four-day event turns Bartle Hall into a one-stop marketplace for outdoor fun with activities for all ages. For additional information, go to KansasCitySportsShow.com. Fans can celebrate baseball in a big league way at the Royals Fan Fest at Kansas City Convention Center's Bartle Hall. Meet your favorite World Series team at the autograph sessions featuring current and former Royals. Enjoy the interactive games for fans of all ages, main stage programs, and more. The club's 2015 Major League Award winners will also be recognized during the event. A portion of the proceeds will again benefit Royal Charities. For additional information, go to royals.com slash fanfest. These are just a few of the many events the Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities offers our community. To learn about even more events, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar. 
give them a call, 816-513-5000. Hi, I'm Deb Connors. I'm the market manager for the City Markets Farmers Market. I started working here 12 years ago. Originally, it was a very tough job, a very big challenge. When um, I was hired in, you could sell almost anything you want. The produce was questionable, a lot of t-shirts and things that people buy and resell type items. It wasn't a true farmer's market. We had the reputation in the state of being kind of a nasty farmer's market, not where you'd want to go, not a safe neighborhood, things like that. Um, so we had to really work, tweaked our rules a little bit, were a little stricter, started doing farm inspections, and it's changed the market where we have a, you know, a better reputation now. In fact, we get awards for farmer's markets now, which we weren't getting any of those <laughs> before. So it's changed a lot, but it took a long time. What makes the Kansas City Farmer's Market unique is that we have a very diverse group of shoppers. We have every ethnic group you can imagine that shops at the city market. We also have a diverse uh, group of vendors that sell at the city market, and you don't see that sometimes. And that's what makes the market unique. I think farmers like to sell here because they really can sell any kind of produce they want to grow. Um, we have the customer base for it. Every week is a festival here. There's musicians, we have restaurants and stores and shops and museums. So it's a very unique um, place for people to come. Some days my first year I asked myself, why am I doing this? But it improved so much and the rewards kept building and the relationships that I was building with vendors and families and customers that I see every week. I've watched um, children grow up at the market. The farmer's children are now married and have children of their own. It's very rewarding to um, be a part of that. And I, I feel like I am a part of something that's very important. I really believe in what I do here and the city market, the Kansas City Farmer's Market. Um, I think it makes a difference in the community. It makes a difference for the city. It's history, which is huge. We help people feed their families, which is huge. And when you walk out in the market on a Saturday and you see that and you know that's what's happened, it makes you want to come back. It makes you want to be a part of it. It makes you proud. Alvin and the Chipmunks want to remind you, bacteria can hide in food and make you ill. Wow! But you can keep bacteria from ruining your day with four simple steps. Clean. I'm waiting for the rinse cycle. Separate. <laughs> cook. Fire in the hole! And chill. We Chipmunks are notoriously tidy. Check your steps. The road trip to food safety starts at foodsafety.gov. The barn doors were left open at the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department Mounted Patrol for the horses to get out and show off their police work. Dozens of visitors came for the KCPD annual open house called Behind the Badge and Bridle, put on by friends of the Kansas City Mounted Patrol. A captive audience watched how members of KCPD used the horses to arrest suspects and maintain crowd control. Following demonstrations, the audience was allowed to ask questions and get up close and personal with the horses. Alice Lee Hollister is chairperson of the Friends of the Kansas City Mounted Patrol. The nonprofit organization provides financial support for needs not funded in the police department's budget. 
We have done so much for them, and we're now down to things like uh, in-house sound system, uh, hay elevator, hay bale elevator for the for the hay uh, the loft up there. Um, we've purchased some huge fan that's running, I think, out in the in the arena. Uh, in-house watering system, in-house and, pour, and uh, paddock, and those are just a few things. But uh, with horses, there's always something, and uh, for the comfort of the officers in the saddle, there's always something. So we're just extremely pleased to support the KC Mo Mounted Police. The event included a demonstration by the K-9 unit and special appearances by the tactical response team and the bomb and arson squad with plenty of refreshments. Macy and Alicia Littlejohn are daughters of one of KCPD's finest who came out to enjoy the show. Visitors also got a chance to see what goes into taking care of the horses behind the scenes. And that's why Sergeant Joey Roberts says it's important that citizens understand why the KCPD Mounted Patrol is necessary. You know, awareness is, is, is a big thing, you know, where they can, you know, see what it takes, you know, the, the things that we have to do to train our horses to, to, to be police horses. Uh, and really, you know, this is the only place that we can do that, you know, show them some of the obstacles and uh, the different formations and crowd control and uh, you know because when we're actually doing the crowd control a lot of times you know people don't get to see that other than the people that are actually involved so you know it's good for people to see how the horses can be effective and and that they are effective you can learn more about Friends of the Mounted Patrol on their Facebook page or visit their website at kcmountedpatrol.org. I'm Sergeant Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. My name is Anna Marie Tutera and I am the director of the Kansas City Museum. Today we are in the Historic Garment District Museum that was founded in 2002 by Anne Brownfield and Harvey Freed. And today we're celebrating both Anne and Harvey because they have entrusted this museum to the care and maintenance of the City of Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation Department. Parks and Rec will now be operating and managing this location in addition to taking care of an incredible collection of, of over 300 Kansas City made garments and accessories that was once part of the Garment District Museum's collection and now becomes part of the Kansas City Museum's collection. Hi everyone, I'm Denise Morrison with the Kansas City Museum. I'm here at the Historic Garment District Museum, which is now under the Kansas City Museum umbrella, part of our family. It's in a historic building of the Garment District. Kansas City has a very prominent role to play in the Garment District history of our country. It was the second largest manufacturer in the city and one of the largest in the country. Its garment union, ladies' garment union, was the largest in the country at one time. So. This area on Broadway, about a several block uh, section of Broadway, is really historic, not just for our city, but for the country. Kansas City made a name for itself in the garment district uh, of the country by doing what's called piecework. In other words, in the past, uh, sewers would be given a whole outfit to create, uh, one each, and they'd do it the whole outfit at a time. In Kansas City, much like Henry Ford, they did it piecemeal. So one worker would do just buttonholes, one would do just seams, and then at the end, it would all be put together, the piece would all be put together. So very much like an assembly line sped up and was much more efficient for um, 
the uh, manufacture of clothing. There were so many bil uh, businesses in the garment district, uh, particularly between the World Wars and right after World War II. It all started uh, leaving uh, about the 60s when all of downtown started seeing a decline. Uh, but this great museum at 801 Broadway has some great history, some great clothing to show, all manufactured here in Kansas City, and we'd love to see you come down and visit us. Museums often play a vital role in transforming neighborhoods and communities and inspiring really in inventive ideas. We're hoping that our presence here at the Garment District Museum will help to inspire a conversation about reactivating the historic Garment District for its intended purpose. We're hoping to join forces with local fashion designers and manufacturers to imagine what it would be like to have retail and workshop space here in the Garment District. The Garment District Museum is open on Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m and by appointment Wednesday through Friday. The general admission for the Garment District Museum is free. For more information about the Historic Garment District Museum, please visit www.kansascitymuseum.org or call 816-513-0726. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov and search for Channel 2. There you'll have a program guide as well as instructions on where to find Channel 2. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great new year.